2008 Lexus IS250 water pump replacement. I'm Brian Essen from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you through that process. So I'd normally tell you to take the engine cover off, but this car came in with the cover missing. Hers has the engine cover, which most likely does. Go ahead and remove that and then pull your engine cover off. And we're going to start by, by removing this air duct here, 10 millimeter here, and the clip here and pull this air duct out. So next I'm going to remove the coolant overflow bottle here by removing the tins on it. In the corner here, removing the cap and removing the vent line off. The wiring harness loom is also in there. You'd use a pair of needle nose pliers like so. Squeeze it here on the ends and pull it and push it off. So the next step would normally be to remove the um, belt. Uh, in diagnosing of this, we had a, it came in from a noise and you can hear the noise. So I had pulled the belt off already to uh, inspect the, the water pump and all the pulley. So you, that's one of the things I like to do is spin all the pulleys by hand and, and listen to the bearings. So for those that I need to know, right here is a, a tensioner and you can just put a, a 14 millimeter uh, ratchet on it and pry it and it, it'll remove the belt. So after you got the belt removed, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna start by removing the pulley here, the 10 millimeters on the uh, pulley or the 12 millimeter bolts here on the pulley and uh, get that off and then we'll have access to view. To get the, <clears throat> the bolts off, I just used the, just an air ratchet like so and just <laughs> took it off. And then I was able to hold it with one, the pulley with one hand and remove the bolts. They weren't that tight. If, um, if it's super tight, you can also loosen the bolts up with the belt on. It may help loosen the, these bolts up. Okay, so now that we got that off, what we need to do now is we need to get this PCM. It's mounted right here, it's in the way. And one of the ways you could do that is also remove the um, the lower radiator hose here, remove the squeeze clamp, remove the hose, and tuck it out of the way. And then <clears throat> they got these little plastic nuts holding it on, and a couple little here and a couple spots, one down below. Start removing those. Don't unplug it. We're going to try to uh, unbolt it and kind of pull it out of the way. So now that we got the lower hose removed, don't forget to put a bucket underneath to catch the coolant. And then uh, removing this plastic cover, or removing those plastic nuts I showed you about. Now we're going to remove the 10 millimeters here, here, and there's probably a hidden one. Yeah, there's a hidden one under here. You're going to remove that, and this whole PCM and bracket assembly will come out and just leave everything hooked up and kind of push everything to the sides. So now that we got our PCM unbolted and just kind of pushed over the side, like I said, don't unplug anything. We're going to remove the idler pulley here by removing the, the 14 millimeter bolt here. So we're also going to remove the, the pulley that goes on the tensioner and it has reverse threads so these, these this bolt is backwards so you'll tighten it to actually loosen it. And take that off and remove it and, and set it aside where you don't get it mixed up. So after that's, after that's done we're going to have to take this plastic cover off here and it has this same thing with those plastic nuts so you're going to take those little the plastic things and then after we get this plastic cover off so this plastic cover looks like this and it had one here in the corner one on the low and one over here and also on the wire loop harness here there's one little little uh, wire loom connection here you pop that out too and remove it and uh it looks like the uh this housing here the thermostat housing full housing is up above the water pump so we're gonna have to remove the the tins that are there to hold it on here and here and uh, yeah, it looks like here so there so when you do this you're gonna be an o-ring here you're gonna replace and then there's two vent lines here that go on the on the upper go ahead and remove that in this in the in the upper hose and this whole housing assembly will come off and then you'll have complete access to your water pump so after removing all the hoses that are connected to the thermostat housing here so the two in the back the lower radiator hose, the hose on the bottom here, the upper radiator hose. Um, now we're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolts that are here. And there's three of them down here below. One here, one here, and one you, you can't see, but it, let's see if I can get it at an angle. You can see it back there. Uh, there, and what you'll use is a, like a wrench from underneath. And then right here, right behind the uh, upper radiator hose where it went, 
There's a, there's a fifth bolt here. So you remove all five of the bolts and the whole housing will come off. So once you remove all five of the bolts, it was on there, I had to just kind of wiggle it a little bit and work it off the O-ring. You don't want to pry too hard, you just want to kind of work it, keep working it until it pops off. And now, now, here's the opportunity to change your thermostat. You can see it inside the housing here. So now that we got the thermostat housing completely off, you can see the water pump here. And so now we're just going to go around any direction you want to, but uh, just go around and take all the 10s and 12 millimeter bolts out. There's enough 12 of them, 12, 13 of them in there. I'm not sure exactly how many are in there, but just remove them all and then, then the whole water pump assembly will come off by all in one piece. So after removing the 15 bolts that hold the water pump on, we're going to clean our mating surface here. Use little rags, a little, maybe a little razor blade and kind of scrape it a little bit and get off any debris or maybe stuck on here. And uh, you don't want to use, use um, like your die grinder wheels or anything because this is made out of aluminum and it's really easy to create dips and valleys in this soft aluminum. And then your new pump won't seal. So I just scrape it off with a little razor blade. And I just set it on the ground here, but uh, and then I set all the bolts back in the way they came out. So if you wanted to see that, but um, all the 12 millimeters are all the same length. So there's none that are any special ones or anything. So, so, so they could go anywhere. But the only difference is, is the, is the, you know, the 12 millimeters wouldn't go in the 10 millimeters. So you won't have to worry about mixing them up. And uh, this is all held on with the, uh, with that thermostat housing. So now we're gonna, after we get our mating surfaces cleaned up, we'll put our pump back on. So now that we've got our mating surfaces clean, we need to prep our, um, our water pump. So on the original bolts, they have a little dab of silicone on the tw all the 12 millimeter bolts. And that's to prevent, because uh, these go into cooling passages and that prevents uh, coolant from coming back through the bolt holes and out of the, um, through. So, so when you put this back together, put a little dab, just a small dab of uh, silicone. The, the, the factory used gray, but whatever you have will work. Black usually works, that's what I like to use. And then on, the, uh, on all the 10 millimeter bolts, they use a, uh, a thread sealer, like Loctite, is a, and, um, and that prevents the bolts from uh, vibrating loose and coming back out and loosening up and causing the coolant leaks. So put a little bit of a thread sealer or Loctite on the, uh, all, all the 10 millimeter bolts. And then, um, you'll, like I said, you'll run them all up and torque them down. Okay, so after uh, running all of our bolts up just flush until the water pump is full and flush, and you know, make sure you put the uh, uh, silicone on the on the 12 millimeters and the Loctite thread sealer on the um, on the tens. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to torque the uh, 10 millimeter bolts first. We're going to go from the inside and work our way out to the outer. So so work your way in and then work your way around like that. Do the tens. And we're going to do those at uh, at five foot pounds when this torque goes down. And if you guys don't have a torque wrench or whatever, you can, you can do it by feel. It's not very much pressure. Just tighten it up pretty snug. And then um, then after we get those torqued down, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the bottom and torque your uh, your uh, 12 millimeter bolts. And, they're, and they are at uh, 15 foot pounds. So we'll torque those all down and we'll start from the middle and at the same thing we'll work our way around to the outer ones. So we'll start from the middle and work your way around to the outer one. So go like this one here and then this one here like that. You kind of want to work your way in from the middle out. Once you get those all torqued down, then we'll put it, we'll change our, our O-ring here and put the O-ring in, in the, in the uh, water pump housing here, the new ones. And we'll put our, we'll change our thermostat. So our um, old, old thermostat, it just, it just uh, has the three bolt, the nuts, just take them off and swap it out and it has the o-ring all everything is all built in one the housing just transfer that over to your thermostat housing now when you put this uh, seal on put a little lube on it so uh, so when you put the it doesn't pinch it and it slides on nice and smooth and don't and then this o-ring it has little rubber little catches in there to help hold it in place so you put that in your new o-ring in there now we put the thermostat housing on so now that you got your thermostat on I just Put all the bolts on by hand. The inner bolt here, the one that was hard, kind of hard to get to, that's the shortest one out of all the rest, and the longer ones went on the outsides. 
So put those in and tighten those all down. And after we get those tightened down, we're gonna put our hoses back on and our hose clamps back on. Okay, also remember to put blue Loctite on all the, the 10 millimeter bolts to hold the thermostat housing down. So after you got that torqued down and the hoses back on the upper hose, the vent hoses and the hose underneath here, and that this vent hose here, go ahead and leave the, the lower radiator hose off momentary. You can um, go ahead and bolt your computer back up into place, put your, put your tins back on, and then after that you can, um, we'll put our pulleys back on, our idler pulleys. So I, I like to start with the uh, with the tensioner pulley first, we'll, and when we do this, we'll put blue uh, uh, thread uh, Loctite on it, thread sealer, and it looks like like this. Like this is made made by Permanex, but Loctite is another brand of it. We'll put a little blue of that on. Tighten the um, the uh, the tensioner one first, so they, so it'll be the one with the, with the spring loaded one. And then remember, it's reverse thread, so we'll, we're gonna loosen it to actually tighten it on this one. Okay, so after bolting your computer up and putting your your thread sealer on your uh, idler pulley here, um, when you go to tighten this, it's going to be spring loaded and want to and trying to try to move. So if, I'm going to try to get my camera down here and look so you can see. But in in the bottom of the tensioner is a hole, and you can put a put a little Allen wrench or a little something in there. And so so you spring load it over to the left until this Allen wrench locks into a hole. And then once it locks into place, then you can tighten the uh, the nut on the on the thing. And then you uh, then you can put your um, your idler pulley on and, and with the blue Loctite again and Loctite that down, and tighten that down. Okay, after you got your idler pulley and your and your uh, tensioner pulley is bolted up, just put your uh, water pump pulley on and then start all your bolts. And then you're gonna have to use a spanner wrench like I this is or this is a special wrench that's designed. It has a little hook like that and it hooks on one of the bolts and catches the bolt and holds it in place and then you can torque it down with your ratchet like so but uh if you don't have that you're gonna have to get creative and maybe use a pair of channel locks and uh and hold the hold the hold it on the bolts don't you don't want to hold it on the threads of the uh where the belts ride that'll damage this and it'll chew up your belt so and um you can also like uh, the factory tool uses uh, uh, these little holes on the pulley and you put a spanner wrench in there and that holds it in place too so then so if you don't have the tools you have to get creative and maybe use a pair of channel locks like so a large pair like so and hold it on the bolts here like this and tighten two bolts and then turn the turn the, the pulley and tighten two bolts and, and, to, and until they're all snug up now that you have all your pulleys on and tight, now you can go ahead and route your belt. Or actually probably easier before we do that is to go ahead and put on these plastic covers that we took off. Go ahead and put these back on first, the left and the right side. Put those on and then we'll put our belt on. Okay, after we got our covers back on, here is a diagram of how the belt routed, courtesy of all data. So go ahead and route your belt and then take that, that pan out that I was telling you about the Allen wrench and then um, now you can uh, install your lower hose okay after installing the lower radio hose go ahead and reinstall your coolant overflow bottle on the in the vent hose here yeah, the overflow hose and um, then we're gonna go ahead and install our snorkel and then um, after we get that ball bolted up we're gonna fill it up with coolant right here at the thermostat housing and um, this is uh, this is considered a self-bleeding system, so there's nothing really. So now that you've got it all back together, um, you're going to fill it up with coolant and let it run until the thermostat opens. And the way you're going to tell that is by feeling the lower radiator hose here. You'll feel it get hot, and then also you want to check for leaks with the flashlight and all, and all the surfaces you touch. And um, and you also want to run it long enough to um, to make sure the cooling fans come on and run. And after that, all that has uh, successfully checked out, then you put your uh, top engine cover on. This one didn't have it, just email about it. Um, and then you can put, uh, put the radiator cap on and uh, test drive it. Also, I wanted to say, uh, fill it up with the proper Toyota approved, Lexus approved coolant. And uh, that completes the job. I'm Brian Essex from How To Automotive, and I, as always, it's my pleasure sharing my experience with you guys. And, um, 
Just wanted to remind you to subscribe for more valuable videos like this, and thank you again.